All right. So in this room, we have um, both the people that I personally um, invited to really join and be part of this conversation. And this is, I think all of you are camp builders or very strongly, I'm looking at you, Simon, or very strongly involved in the core team of the gathering of tribes, uh, if not building or participating in building a camp. Um, but the link of this session has also been shared with the much wider events that I just mentioned um, before. And so there will be some people sort of watching on the side and my idea is that we can have the core circle of those that will be sharing their stories and and people around can uh, can listen depending on how it goes and how inspired you you all are by the topic we may have some time at the end to open out to to questions and more interactions with everyone in the room um but i think it may be quite a lot of people so we will see before we get started does uh, anyone have any questions is anyone deeply confused about the space you can also ask a question if you're not deeply confused <laughs> okay, it looks like we have clarity. Fantastic. Great. So I would like to start with um, a quick round of check-in. Uh, it's not that many, so it should be fine. Um, those that are uh, watching or listening that have their camera off and that are muted, please feel free to turn your camera on just for this part of the meeting. Um, and to take part in the round of check-in and introductions. If you want to remain hidden, that is completely fine. We accept shyness in the space. And uh, the prompt for today's check-in, let's keep it simple. Uh, please share your name, your uh, physical location, where your body is right now on this planet, or maybe not on this planet, um, your tribe, which you can uh, choose as yeah your own interpretation. Some people consider their organization, their tribe. For some people, it's the group of friends that they're around. So see how it resonates within within you and what's alive uh, in you right now. And for the last one, what's alive in you right now, if you could keep it short, but just share a project or something that you're working on that is really making you vibrate. It doesn't have something that you're working on. It can be something that you're playing with also. Um, I will call people out for practicality. Um, so, Joe, you happen to be the first on my screen. Well, I, well thank you. <laughs> and hello, greetings all. I am currently a part of the canyons of the Southern California coastal bioregion here, very close to Hollywood, um, Los Angeles. And which means I am tuning in at the wee hours of 2.09 a.m. because I'm just a little bit mad. But I really wanted to participate with you all and thought I was going to be Europe bound already. But alas, I am here. So I'm glad to be part of this. I am the uh, camp leader for the Think, Do, Be Nature Camp. And that comprised of the Institute of Relational Being, Bioleadership, uh, project, uh, Synergia Institute, and, and many others, many, many others, garden thinking, uh, concentric leadership. And the idea of it, um, Audrey actually kind of helped co-create in, in a way because we wanted to bring together a lot of different organizations that are kind of in the think tank and uh, educational space of regeneration. And um, there is a very intentional component of bringing in our more than human companions into this space and seeing how we can uh, help contribute to the greater gathering of tribes, some awareness and um, camaraderie, companionship and activation, uh, of, if you will, of being with the rest of nature for this camp, uh, for this, for the whole of the gathering of tribes uh, event, which is going to be very exciting to, to bring and share and and explore with you all and i suppose i can say that what is alive in me currently in part that has to do with these living systems is uh the institute of relational beings contribution and exploration into working with uh the multi-species community that we are a part of uh through the fellowship that is worldwide right now 
with people on many different continents, and we're trying to apply an exploration of using our mycelial fungal uh, companions as kind of uh, inspiration for how we are navigating and operating as a community of fellows. And so I can share more about that later, but that's uh, something I'm very interested in and um, just very curious about. And I'm looking forward to hearing more from all of you. So I will just wrap there. Thank you for, uh, again, Audrey, having me be a part of this. And uh, I don't, thank you. Thank you so much, Joe. Uh, Joe, <laughs> you're next. Thanks. I got confused for a minute there. I am uh, Joe as well, uh, Petroni. I'm an architect. Uh, I work in the regenerative field. I've been working prior to that in the permaculture field. So they sort of organically evolved. Um, I am in at the confluence actually of three bioregions, which is an interesting place in the south of France. Uh, we'd call it Occitanie. Um, and and the, the somebody was saying the elderberries and uh, the elderflowers in bloom. Likewise, here is gorgeous. Um, I am uh, currently working with the tribe here locally, which is a new thing for me because I've been working globally and remote for a long while. And anchoring back into place is is beautiful on a tiny uh, listen to your land project for uh, the community new community event space that we're going to have here in the tiny village, um, uh, which links to uh, the um, project that I'm working on right now, um, which is regenerative patterns. We're trying to figure out what the patterns of regeneration are for building and making new places. Um, and so um, we're working with finding these patterns and testing them out and questioning our places uh, through these lenses in order to unlock the potential of uh, the regenerative potential of places. Um, it's I'm really enthusiastic about it and it's it's lovely to be here and talking about living systems because that's the main that's the the main focus of it, isn't it? Thank you so um, much, Joe. I'll hand it out. I realized I was very ambitious with my check-in and I think the last question actually really touches onto the conversation that I really want us to have in a in a group. So let's reduce the check-in to our name, our location and just our tribe. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and then we'll, we'll dive in into the living systems part of it, if that's okay. Um, thank you. Simon, you're next. Thank you. My name is Simon. Simon Grant. I'm here, currently in Belgium, uh, going to England on Thursday, and uh, I, I'm potentially with any number of tribes, uh, or and and any or none. I'm not sure, <laughs> but gathering of tribes will do for the moment. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Dylan. Hi, hello. Thank you, Audrey. Um, <clears throat> I'm currently in Vietnam just being a tourist, uh, hiking and, and sweating it out. Um, and I'm representing Eternal Forest um, as a camp curator, um, just recently taken on this role and very excited as I, I generally work with forestry anyway. Um, yeah. Thank you. Hendrik. Yo, um, good morning from Aria Branca, Portugal. I'm at the Atlantic coast, uh, three and a half hours away from where the venue is, um, but more closer to Lisbon. Um, tribe uh, is evolved six, mostly for the gathering of tribes. Uh, I'm also bringing Portugal's ecstatic dance tribe to the gathering in some form. And the last one is... Uh, yeah, art of hosting, complexity facilitation, warm data, um, that kind of work, uh, weaving over to to tech. I think those are the three tribes that I'm in groups that I'm bringing over. Yeah, check over Thank back you to so you, Audrey. Much. Uh, Jeremy. What's up, nerds? I'm Jeremy. I'm calling from the what is it, the, the Atlantic Coastal Woodland Bioregion here in Amsterdam. 
um, tribes. I fucked around with all those nerds in the DRC. Um, and I hang out with a bunch of token nerds um, in the, the context of regenerative finance. So uh, those are those are my, my, my scene. That's where the vibe is. Anybody else? Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, Mark. Um, hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm in Somerset, um, in southwest England. I'm on the edge of the Vale of Avalon near Glastonbury. I'm the designer for the Frequency Village Camp, which is Frequency Village's um, a, a project I'm co-founder of, which is a whole systems eco-village community project in the Azores on Selmagar Island. And that is um, the project um, that I'm very much vibing with right now. And we'll be bringing that to the camp. Great, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna leave it here for the check-in. Actually, sorry, Otman. Just seeing you, you're also a camp yeah. leader, if I'm not mistaken, officially as of this week. Uh, you yes, wanna yes. Yourself and your camp also. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Uh, I am Ajman Wagdi in Mohammedia, Morocco, and I am the initiator of the project uh, Garden Generator. And officially, since yesterday, uh, a few days, I am uh, decided to build a camp at the Gathering of Tribes. Thank you so much, Atman. Um, okay, so we'll leave it here with the intros. I know there is a lot of other beautiful fascinating people in the room. I see you. If you can um, put your links, a message, the name of your tribes in the comments in the chat section, that would be great. And let's keep the conversation flowing in the chat um, so that we can get into the very juicy, exciting bit uh, of this conversation, which, as I mentioned before, was um, around living systems design and, and uh, and how to manage complexity, basically, um, in, in the work we do and, and in our lives. So just as a little summary, I would really like to have this conversation first flowing between the camp builders. We have Joe here with Institute of Relational Being based in the States, Dylan, who is working a lot with agroforestry um, in Vietnam. Hendrik is our chief complexity master in the room uh <laughs> simon has been i guess doing everything relating to uh facilitation complexity for years joe brings in the uh, architecture and and design real design uh side jeremy super excited to have you with the region finance and and blockchain and more uh tech side of things otman uh, i think you bring the really hands-on grassroots uh, approach from North Africa and Mark, uh, super excited to hear your take on this really holistic design at Eco Village level. Uh, so that's quite uh, interesting, diverse uh, room already, and I'm really excited about the fact that for me it really mimics what's going to happen at the at the at the gathering of tribes in in September. Um, so I just want to open the circle and let's see what uh, who wants to jump in first with. Uh, with one question, which is intentionally very open, which is what has it meant for you uh, right now with the projects and the tribes that you mentioned to work with living complex systems in your context? Um, meaning how have you really changed the way that you approach work uh, and planning and structure and creating scaffoldings to take into account that we work with living systems, there's humans involved, and and how have you sort of integrated this idea of complexity within your work? Um, if we could start with a round table, just with a few uh, specific examples of what that has meant for you, or actually you can make it also abstract if that's what makes sense, um, and then and then it will flow from there. And welcome back, Victor, to the to the conversation. Don't be shy, please. I know you all have a lot of examples. Joe, 
call him. I know I know we can talk to this, please. <laughs> uh okay. Um hmm. Well, I okay, so I maybe will uh expand upon the thing I mentioned briefly in my intro. The so the Institute of Relational Being is a, a relatively newly formed organization that is a continuation of the explorations had by myself and many, many others at Schumacher College in Devon, England. And uh, the, the master's I did was engaged ecology. But the beautiful thing about the kind of living systems ethos of the college head, hands and heart involved uh, cross disciplinary explorations throughout the learning with the regenerative economics, ecological design thinking, um, mind movement ecology, and, and many others, um, <clears throat> poetics of imagination, et cetera. And why I bring that up is because we tried to, to come from a space outside of the mm, business as usual, kind of global north paradigms of how to learn in a more holistic way. And through that, a lot of ideas were played with. And one of those that we kept coming back to, which I feel is really uh, happening a lot in the regenerative space in general is embracing the mushrooms and, and mycelial networks and, and how they flow and work with uh, the soil and trees and plants and between them themselves as well. And so we are designing a and, and implementing a fellowship and also an exploration through this camp to expand upon an exploration of how it might look to work with that model of the systems of being a part of a network of humans, but also organizations and what it might look like for one human in, in the case of the fellowship, one, one fellow to, to be like a fruiting body that is above the soil and, and have all of the other fellows be the, the facilitator and flow of nutrients and uh, resources and support underneath the soil and allow for that fruiting body to be the one that kind of gets the exposure of the sun and rain and the air and the beautiful surroundings that the others kind of step back and um, allow that to be to be the, the the flowing system. And likewise with the, the many, many organizations that are now a part of the Think Do Be Nature Camp, what we're hoping to do down the way after the the camp and leading up to is design a, a more long-term, probably multi-year exploration of the living systems um, design that is inspired by the mushrooms and these mycelial networks to do the same with organizations and to see what it might look like, for example, the bioleadership um, project to be that fruiting body for perhaps uh, one full season and for all of the other organizations to say, how can we help you? How can we resource you? What what might you need right now? And um, how can we lift you up and amplify your work and your message and um, support you? Because we see that, you know, these old competition-based systems aren't necessarily serving us. And so um, what will it look like to play together in this more um, nutrient sharing way uh, and resource way together? And I could expand more on that, but I will just resist because it, I, I do like to imagine into it more and more. But admittedly, my brain is actually moving a little slowly here at 2.25 a.m. for me. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a very beautiful and exciting uh, exploration. And I look forward again to expanding on it with you all and knowing just that when we're at the camps, uh, the greater tribe together, gathering of tribes, that uh, we can share more of that, and and it, and we welcome people to uh, play with this this these metaphors and these ideas of the living systems of these incredible beings, our, our fungi, you know, companions who just do this and and have helped like literally allow rain to be and and the nutrients to pass between these plants and the soil and allow for this rich abundance of biodiversity and life to flourish, and I think that that is an incredible, exciting, beautiful. Um, you know, being um, beings that that we can learn from and um, try and be more like, be more like mushrooms a little bit. So I'll just leave it there. Thank you, yeah. Joe. Thank you so much. Uh, by the way, Victor is doing it, and I I didn't mention, but uh, do raise your hands whenever you wanna 
do you want to react or share and, and I will start the queue. Uh, Victor, go for it. Thank you. Thanks so much. It's uh, I really wanted to jump in to connect with that because uh, I love the metaphor. Actually, I just had the realization in the last few days that, I, that the gathering is a kind of a fruiting body of the, the mushroom, of the mycelium that we're building. And what where I'm really coming to with what does doing things regeneratively mean? It means you need to do it at all levels, the inner work, the teamwork, your, what your project does in the world, but also working ecosystemically and having some group of awareness, what contributing to the ecosystem, what you're getting from the ecosystem. And this is exactly why we're doing the gathering is to try and build this mycelium. Uh, I can, we cannot really support the projects, but we can help the flow of information of needs and offers to increase the amount of support ongoing in the ecosystem. And by the way, the lady I was talking to now is a perfect example. She is working on soil health in Poland. She has built a network of 60,000 farmers interested in working more effectively. And of course, she doesn't sell them regenerative agriculture. She sells them how to not destroy your soil and not go bankrupt, because that's what responds to farmers, but selling regenerative practices in so here I am talking to her, inviting her to the gathering. She's really interested in our format. We want to share our format. She also wants to do events. So there is people like us that are ecosystem builders. And really, we're all here trying to boot up this ecosystem as a whole. But I think it's also necessary for everybody, even doing a small project, to do a little bit of a reach out, even if it's just writing a blog about what you're doing, what you're succeeding, what you're failing, having conversations with other people. To be regenerative, you need to be doing some interconnection work, putting things from the mycelium and taking things from the mycelium. Thank you so much, Victor. Uh, Hendrik. Yeah, um, question. Uh, out of the warm data space, Nora Bates, and I don't know if any who knows her or who has come across her. I've been in, in that space maybe, since 20, maybe you can 2020. Give a quick intro, I, 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 I'm not I think sure like go, go, going deep into like Google her, the Bates Institute. Uh, um, her her father, uh, Gregor Bates, and coined cybernetics, one of the originators of the whole uh, systems uh, thinking theory and space, and her great grandfather. Uh, coined the term genetics and all the mess that's around it. He actually refused to get a knighthood uh, for his work because he said it's corrupted now and uh, it's misused. And there's a whole story and funny, funny interviews with her talking about it, um, which uh, she really is in, in, in the rigor. Uh, and one of the core questions in that space uh, that in the training tends to be like the first question is how do we change a system? if we are in the system and we are the system. And I think that is a, that was one of the things that really broke my patterns of being coming out of learning and development. And I teach people skills where I still think there's a degree of value, but then that most like this, the pattern of there's a problem and now we have a solution, there's a linear path. And actually when you're really like in living systems, there's like all the messiness and then some, some we, you, actually create possibilities and then somehow we end up in a different constellation but we don't know there is no directionality and, and and knowing involved it's way more of being what's at and where we are and then recognizing what can we shift a bit that might shift and just shifting one piece shifts everything um uh, and i love that permaculture was mentioned i think that this way there's a lot of recognition with the patterns and, and principles and permaculture and system thinking complexity. There's something in the patternings around being really present, uh, which I enjoy around the region space is that the spirituality comes in because when you go in mythical schools, they actually talk, they have different language, but they, for me, it's always describing a very similar patterning about getting present, see what is, and then take a step and being conscious about the step I take. And, um, and I, uh, in that that regard, for example, I I I highly challenge the 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 language around. Uh, let's be like. 
I think because in the moment I say, let's be like nature, let's be like mushrooms, I create a separation uh, linguistically that I, I'm trying to take get away off. And actually, it's like, I am mush mushrooms. Interesting, I chose this shirt today. Uh, I am nature. I am the system. Uh, I have a weird human experience that has applied consciousness on this. And then through that observation, I create linguistic separation. And I think that is the often the starting point already of like, because then I, in the moment I say, let's be like it, there's an assumption uh, construction underneath that I am not. And I think that is often a starting point already where that, that is the perpetuation of the same separation. Um, and I like the intent behind it too. So like in the sense of starting a conversation, that's why this question of Nora came into my mind. I am the mushroom and I am the, and the, the, the Buddhist teaching talk about the same thing. So if I come from that place, how do I start engaging with my life, with the work I do, and how do we start playing with each other? If I actually say I am you and you are me, while we are also very unique and different. And um, so that, that's one nugget. And the other one I think is interesting, and that is something where I work with Graham Boyd's work around Revolut 6, around creating new organizational legal structures and economic structures. And uh, Dave's work, uh, Dave Snowden's work around complexity. And one big thing there is that if we really want to get in coherence and complex, diverse systems, we need to stop trying to create cohesion, meaning we need to have the same principles, we need to have the same values, we need to be like on the same path. Um, it's actually like, how do we create on a, on a more meta level, economic higher level systems where we can completely dislike each other personally, have a different set of values, but we move towards uh, a way of being in the world that actually allows us all to st stay alive as a species and the species around us to stay alive and flourish. But I can have a very different religious belief or understanding and, and value system than you, but we still move towards the same direction. How can we create that? Um, and yeah, so that that is something that intrigued me a lot because I think diversity is a core principle of any living system approach. And that means there's, there is a degree competition or more competition and difference, but on a bigger wholeness level, we're moving towards, a, we keep life lifing. Um, if, and even with the challenge the assumption that this is not already happening. Um, but these are things I'm sitting with that has really broke my work and how I'm looking at the living system approach. And just to like bring some peace on letting the conversation flow. Thank you so much, Hendrik. I yeah, there's a lot to be said, I think, but Dylan, I know you were raising your hands. When Hendrik said I am mushroom specifically, you raised your hand. <laughs> Actually, it was more in reaction to also, Hendrik, everything you said, fantastic, man. Um, but more in relation to changing our vocabulary. And uh, I guess I have a background in, in, in writing and literature as well. So um, when I started studying a little bit of um, indigenous culture, and especially um, this book, Braiding Sweetgrass. I don't know how many people are here or have read it, but um, there is a part that mentions um, basically their vocabulary and how they relate to where they are and who they are at that, at that point in time. Um, so, for example, instead of saying, you know, I'm in the forest, they say I am the forest at this point in time. And so um i think this really kind of changes our whole mindset to uh who we are depending on 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 where we are and how we how we relate to that in in a context um in becoming really the adaptable being with a with a place um and then w w within that like how that can change our whole kind of brain structure or, or our, our mind structure um, and remove maybe certain certain barriers of, of possibilities. Um, so yeah, in, in the context of we are a regenerative culture, um, 
you know that that's just something that amplifies and can can really ripple out to to people in and really break down the the ideas of what is possible and impossible so yeah thank you thank you so much uh simon i think you had your hand raised uh okay thank you I, i'm not i'm not sure if this is the right time to 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 chip in but um I wanted to put a diff I wanted to put a different perspective from Hendrik. Um and um looking at this similarity and diversity thing, I think uh, and again looking at Nora Bateson, um I, I think that I, I've seen quite a bit of a tendency to sort of like go right away from, oh no, it's not this, it's it's all that. And actually it's a funny because I see that as as actually introducing a new um, a new polarization, which which is actually really not not so I don't find so helpful. I mean, I'm I'm interested in building systems to help people connect based on similarity, because I've seen in my own life firsthand how a lack of uh, coherence in terms of values can make living together very very difficult and a time wasting. Um, I'm involved in a number of projects to build knowledge commons to help people learn and collaborate. And again, knowledge commons depends on a certain amount of coherence between people, not on what they're saying, but on the way in which they say it. Um, I'm very much see myself as in the space between the left and the right hemispheres. If you, if you look at uh, Ian McGilchrist's work um, in the sense of um, uh in, in the sense of yes, okay, certainly left left hemisphere thinking has been over dominant and, and and oppressive in many many ways. It's also given us lots of things, and and I don't want to go. Oh no, left brain left brain is rubbish. You know, let's all go back to being intuitive all the time and being totally embodied and forget the head. No, the head is wrong. The head is bad. The heart is everything. No, we need balance. That's my position. And um, and I think in that in, in that context, I, I look for in both intergenerational and interstage collaboration, because uh, if we look at adult development, even though even if you um, um, unless you believe in Nora Bateson's total rejection of <laughs> of, of, of stage uh, ideas, um, then um, we evolve into understanding complexity. We evolve into being able to cope with uh, uncertainty and so forth. Um, and, and so I think to me, the, the challenge with complexity uh, is, is very much that how do we actually, um, how, how do we help people who are confronted by far too much complexity and therefore regress therefore go into simplifying their their world therefore going to i mean and these days politically uh the simplistic narrative of right-wing um populist movements for example how do we help people understand and be secure enough in order to be able to accept complexity which is inherently challenging and that's what i would love love to see us doing through um, through a kind of really through agreement through uh, through understanding how understanding better how we can talk to each other giving ourselves a really good um vocabulary and means of of collaboration and that's of course what i was um helping uh, audrey with with uh, with the gathering of tribes thank you simon uh joe Thank you, and what a great uh, segue. Let me lower my hand uh, first. Um, yeah, so there's so much to, to like my brain's popping with uh, what all of you have said uh, before. Um, and, I, and I think then what I'd like to touch upon is, you know, segueing on the idea of, of diversity and, um, and bringing in the idea of scale. Um, I think, uh, that's what I've been working on as well in the past couple of months in thinking, trying to figure out where gl scaling globalized solutions is appropriate and where finding the diversity of a 
uh, at a certain scale um, and and working with diversity um, and where that is where each is appropriate and um, and that's in a way what the patterns are about. And I find myself working with two layers of patterns in a way, like a universal layer, a meta layer of patterns, which are universal and non, not scale bound, which then determine a lower localized level of patterns, which um, defines the DNA of a place. Um, and in that, I'll bring the, this idea of, of, of ecologies and of places and how every single place ecology is different from the one 10 kilometers further away. Um, and for me as an architect, that means responding to that specific ecosystem uh, with a... Um, um, with an element that communicates between humans and the ecosystem, right? Because that's 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 what our buildings are. They're more or less static elements that help us mediate our um our body with the with the environment. So the that means understanding that environment in order to mediate it well, uh, to mediate it better. And so it, if if we're um considering each ecosystem and each environment as exactly the same as the other, as the one next door, um, we get this, this wave now of making um, passive inert buildings that do the, you know, they mediate the exact same way wherever you, wherever you find yourself. Um, and so it negates this, uh, this, this diversity. And I'll I'll stop here and uh, let Otman go away. Thank you so much, Jo. I've I've asked a question for you in the chat. Super curious about how you move between the levels. Uh, yeah, Otman. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was touched by uh, asking that question. What is a living a living system? A living system is us, for example, a human being, a family, a village. Uh, a region, a state, a uh, yeah, it can go on, an ecological system. And the more complex it gets, we need, uh, what, what I wrote uh, last time, we need management of intelligent, uh, uh, intelligent management of complexity. And uh, for that, uh, we have natural intelligence, which is, uh, for example, our brains, uh, our natural intelligence, and then we have developed uh, semi-natural uh, intelligences, uh, uh, our social codes, uh, and then then we go. Uh, it gets complicated a little bit, and then we move to uh, semi-artificial intelligence systems, which are, for example, bureaucracies. And then we tend to go further with digital codes, and uh, yes, uh, which means the more complex it gets. Uh, we need complex systems to manage those. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I have brought the idea. Uh, it's a little, a little bit complicated. Is it complex or complicated? Uh, <laughs> it is complex. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's Jeremy. very complex. Yeah. yeah. What's up, nerds? Um, where to start? Well, first I notice that like our stock and trade right here is in sort of this exchange of of ideas and proposition. And I really want to point out that the map is not the territory. I think in trading and propositions, now, now let's let, let me qualify this to give our, give this difference a chance of landing. I, I love these propositions, right? I love I love all of the things and all of the nerdy things and all of the 
super giga meta nerdy things that are being talked about and mentioned. Like we love all of these things. And while there's certainly value in the education around these things and the insights and knowledge that they bring, like I don't think talking about, I don't think the conversation on a propositional level is gonna get us there. And I don't think that's the thing that we yearn for, um, frankly. And so as I hear this conversation about all of these things I love, I also notice that I have a lot of difference and uh, you know, some of these things I I am triggered I'm triggered by and go, oh yes, that's my motherfucking jam. Some of these things I'm triggered by and I go, that's too different for me right now. And that makes me kind of freak out and get pissed off and want to say something and want to go, no, that's not that's not the vibe, right? And I think that's kind of that is generally a risk in trading in propositional knowledge, in that like it, we are we are in the head level level of the experience we are in the we are in the brain and we are in the space of causality and so like i just want to take some space to have a fucking breath and like experience some spaciousness with you nerds that isn't so full of ideas and just helps us settle into, oh, okay, this is us, huh? And so I might invite you to do what I'm doing. And I'm just scrolling around, looking at faces. What's up, Nika? Hi, Mark. How you doing, Alisa? Good to see you again, Hendrik. Excellent shirt choice. <laughs> Hi, Simon, Otmana, Joe, Joe, Dylan, Audrey, Victor, all these, all these names with no faces attached. All good. Everybody has bandwidth challenges. And so I'm really curious about how we can escape the propositional in this context and lean much more into the vibe that we want to cultivate with each other and offer ourselves some more spaciousness to play around and explore that and what i notice is that's often a thing that happens in the body so as i do this i notice some butterflies in my belly right i notice my heart is really racing and my breath my breath is like oh god i am taking up space in common space. And I hate it when people take up space. Oh my God. Oh. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, Audrey, you had your hand up. I'm going to give it a different angle. Audrey, you mentioned at the start, you were interested to hear my take on, on a holistic vision. Um, my work is design, but I I work at the level of the subtle biofield. So I work with harmonics and sound, and we've been talking about living systems, and I think there's 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 an opportunity to be able to um, to connect the different tribes and work at the level of the biofield and harmonics. Now that Joe is talking about the, a couple of you have talked about the mycelium networks, and I think well, we have we have a, a network of, of of camps within 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 the forest. I think you know it could be an amazing opportunity to do an experiment with with each of the camps and frequency and sound um, at the moment. Um, I know that the Schumacher work is very much to do with feeling, feeling, heart and hands. You have to correct me, Joe. Um, and in terms of in terms of feeling, the way that we connect, a lot of my work is about connecting biofields, utilizing harmonics. And there's a 
this is something which we'll do, we'll be doing a camp where we are actually able to connect the ecosystem, the living system of the trees into architecture. And we'll be showing how to do that in one of our, I think one of our workshops where everything, whether it's a tree or whether it's a new piece of architecture or with a human has this, this living system, the DNA we've been talking about. And I think that there's, there's an opportunity to be able to go into that within the forest and to actually to listen to the trees, to talk to the trees and to be able to see how it's very, very simple for us to connect with that living system of the trees. And then there's, um, the, there's that new plant tech which can produce the, the music of the plants. But I think that there's, you know, we as, as a group can do that and um, really show how our con you know, connected consciousness, we've been talking about life force and living systems, where they're really the two sides of the same coin, where there's life force, there's consciousness. And I think that there's, and we've also been talking about networks and information, all of this, all of this in, in, a, in an organic situation, where, you know, in a living forest, I think we can have fun with that and start to, start to play with, play with the sound and the trees and the mushrooms all together. And uh, I think we could have really wonderful time developing a living system in, you know, beyond the uh, organizational and the aesthetic and the, and the philosophical, but really just getting our feet in the dirt and connecting and recognizing that, that we're, we're one big holistic system, you know, the interconnected and, um, have lots of fun talking to the trees and the mushrooms. And we can throw some advanced harmonic science at it as well. I think it could be a, a great little workshop. Thank you so much, Mark. Super excited to see that that camp coming alive. Um, I wanted to react to what came before, but actually I think it, it moves into what you shared, Jeremy. And what you shared, Mark, uh, quite nicely for me, what what came alive was this idea of interdependency. I had a very beautiful conversation just yesterday with um, a, a leader in the DAO space, and she was basically grilling me on the um, design of the gathering of tribes, which was fascinating because it forced me to really go deep into why are we doing this? Why is it co-created? How is the budget working and so on and so forth and one thing that came forward at some point was she looked at me and she said but you're taking all the risk right if Hendrik says yeah I'm building a camp and I'm bringing a hundred people and Hendrik brings two people well Hendrik is fine but what happens to you and so we got into this space which was really interesting she wasn't bringing it as a criticism but just as a as a as a fact right and and she's partly right and uh, the more I thought about it, the more I came to the conclusion that, well, yes, and that's the whole point. So for me, it's the, the living systems part means that we are an ecosystem and we all have a function in the ecosystem, right? I am Audrey. I do whatever event production. I need Joe and Joe and Hendrik and Dylan and Jeremy and so on and so forth. And I don't need them to be doing what I'm doing. I need them to be doing exactly what they're doing in this moment so that I can continue doing what I'm doing. And so I wonder if in the in engaging with and embracing complexity in living systems, there is this idea that we have to take the risk because we have to recognize that we're very strongly dependent upon everyone else in that room. Like right now, my livelihood is partly in the hands of all of you, right? So is my inspiration, my joy, uh, the next projects that I will come up with and so on. And I, I wonder if there is this step that is, yes, I will take the risk to recognize the dependency which is here anyway. And what happens if we all take that step at the same time and all recognize that we are an ecosystem and we are a collective that depends upon itself and that we depend upon one another. And rather, right, than doing what we've been doing for the past hundred years, it seems, which is, I am uh, an individual and I need no one and I can manage my own finances and projects and so on, which is uh, 
big, beautiful illusion that doesn't really lead anywhere. However, I feel like there is this jump that we all need to make that maybe is a bit underestimated. And the yes, I will step into the collective. And yes, I will recognize the very strong dependency I have on Hendrik bringing us and those people to the gathering. I'm joking, Hendrik. But, <laughs> but you know, upon all of us doing this, and so in how we're doing this with the gathering, for me, there is really this element of, yeah, we're we're jumping into the space, right? Because we're just inviting people to build camps. And then whether it happens or not, it's kind of out of my hands, right? But there is this attempt at recognizing that, no, I am not in control of all of this, which I link in a lot with what complexity science brings in, right? In terms of, yeah, you, you just don't have control over all of this. And so Jeremy, linking into what you said, just in terms of like, for me, this is how we can take the idea and anchor it in the space, really. Like I am taking that jump and then let's see what happens. Yeah. Anyone else? Willing to put their livelihoods in the hands of Hendrik. <laughs> uh, nah, <laughs> and, and it's a joke and partly not. Just as a reference, originally we had a huge Erasmus Plus proposal in case I would have funded 100 people to come around and uh, that kind of fell through because of their timeline change because of overwhelming amount of applications. <laughs> so dealing with bureaucracy um, is an interesting um thing and for, for, for me what you brought up like this I'm just piggybacking on one thing that really uh, uh and building on Jeremy's piece like uh, observing one's own own reaction the topic of risk is super interesting working with organizations and institutions because and entrepreneurs like who's who's taking the risk and how do we manage risk mitigation and what are our perceptions of how we deal with it and how what control mechanisms have we built in the legal structures that we operate with, uh, if an organization goes bankrupt, who's carrying at it, uh, who like the resources invested and that dissolves, acknowledging on a higher level, the failures actually lead to new insights and moving things forward. But like, as you said, everything being reduced either on a person and then our legal structures actually having mimicked that idea of the individual in, in on, on organizations um, and being separate from each other. And then how do we, like for, for your original question, what's your experience with living systems work and then bringing that enabling uh, entrepreneurs mainly um, and and funding institutions now shifting into a different pattern, but needing to do it within the existing legal realms. Um, like I'm in a group where we're looking and building new new venture studio designs and new investment structures in order to allow money to be more distributed widely rather than making a small percentage of people uh, rich. But then we meet the legal requirements of setting up uh, investment institutions. And then that has a, like, we cannot do, we want to do more of it, but we're legally not allowed. And then if we do it, the people who actually set up the legal organizations that are then liable could end up in jail, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, all the stuff that's in the in the Web3 DAO space and the crypto space with the EU having changed their legal uh, requirements or some other countries, all of a sudden you're, you're in risk of losing your livelihood. So how do you navigate pushing things forward and allowing it to shift in a world that is not like in parts ready for it and where where can we do things and we're not so that has been it, it for me personally I, I family system friends and a lot of inner reflection to find the trust within to lean into some experiments that feel a bit wider and acknowledging that there is a lot of privilege um in the region space in my experience around us doing these experiments because we have the bandwidth to not have to deal with earning money just to survive or having um, being traumatized through war experiences that we don't have the the physical experiences to actually have the bandwidth to experiment or lean out. Um, so it's an interesting place to sit in. Uh, to, for me, it has been a journey of observing privilege, but then also risk taking how much am I willing to lean into this if there is it doesn't work in the system. So uh, going a bit with more the personal experience, having being in that space and finding paths forward. Um, and how do we deal with risk? And how is risk understood? And actually understanding that risk could be understood very differently. 
And and then I'll pass on to Jeremy and then Joe, but just to say, how do we accept the risk, but how do we understand that being dependent upon an ecosystem is risky, but also reduces risk, right? So it's, it's this beautiful for me uh, paradox that needs to be held, you know. Uh, Jeremy? Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was like, where are you? <laughs> yeah, this beautiful. Is, this is, this beautiful. is Amsterdam. Nice. So um, touch some trees, get outside today, nerds. Um, sip. Got to make sure my dog doesn't fall off this bridge. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of ideas that I have, you know, institutions and assemblages and collaborative networks and, like, my opinions about, I don't think the work is within organizations, but I think it's across organizations. So how might we, we, we create a new protocol for, for what effectively looks like flocking um, in terms of collaborative blah, blah, blah. And for sure, the questions around risk and around you know things not working out and putting yourself out there are definitely super, super salient there. And so um, to talk my project and show my shit, you know, Regions Unite has organized at this point 20 different gatherings from uh, week-long hackathons to mostly two-day unconferences. Um, in, I, I actually counted where it's like six continents crazily like i don't know understand how that even happened and really without a fucking hell of without a chance in hell of a business model so pointing to both the scarcity dynamics that exist in the space uh, but also the possibility that if we and yet we continue like nobody's really gotten paid nobody's earning livelihood from this project and still a lot of shit happens so there's a there's a beautiful sparkle, you know, and that is possible there. That if we can pay less attention to the necessities of a capitalist structure who that wants to turn everything into a transaction and wants to create the sense of scarcity that doesn't exist. And sit. I gotta get my dog to stop jumping on this dude. This is where. I'm Tiny tangent. Um, so yeah, just shit like that. Anyway, I got opinions. I, I would once more invite you to take note of the response, the like or dislike meter around the pin and around opinions, especially the dislike meter. That stuff is very interesting and super juicy. If we can just get to the same place. Then. All right, anybody else? I think Jo has her hand up, and I, I've just invited in the chat both here as well, Alisa and Nika, if you want to join in, please do raise your hand. And also welcome to Anya, who is also a camp builder in the gathering, uh, and who is yeah, just joining us now. Uh, jo? Um, you know, yes, well, what to say? Um, let's, uh, I'll talk about risk and Moloch appeared in my mind um and um, let me mention something that's a bit tangent from yesterday um a thought of mine everybody's talking now about scope three emissions and we're not talking about scope three um impact or okay. relationship or um mm. you know the real regenerative or degenerative impact of every consumption that you make every every sourcing that you that you make um and and it is exactly about about moloch moloch is the uh, represents our inability to see beyond the a leads to b um and and once we do understand that a there is that there's a beyond a to b to c and it's all a vast interconnected web of of um butterfly effects um you do relinquish control cuz there is no way in hell we can manage all that data and and i think this is the the point where we are right now as a civilization is the the, the breaking of this dualistic notion of us versus nature nature is an object that we're measuring and as as soon as we'll have enough 
computational capacity will be finally able to control it and, and it's not and yes thank you, thank you uh and it's not it it's not easy to explain i have a, a very very good friend they're fantastic they are so deeply embedded in this notion that every conversation we have reaches this point and there's sort of no way around it there is like it's a paradigm and it's un un undebatable from a point onward okay i tangented way off but so i'll, I'll leave it here i can see the reaction so please go ahead take it away dylan me yeah um, I mean, I think it's, it's really a process of preparing for the, the, the space for failure in that you can create an environment where your organization is robust, um, as in you have the right people there who, who, who are able to kind of, let's say, mitigate as much damage lim limitation as, as possible, while at the same time, um, you know, kind of being able to mentally and emo emotionally um, prepare for, for the fact that maybe failure somewhere along the line is inevitable and that actually you know it, it's that that coming short is is really only uh, a lesson and a gap that 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 creates um a void for for something else to to fill in um so yeah not not necessarily trying to control that and and um also fearing that that something terrible is going to come out of it but um kind of releasing that and and yeah just going forward with with what we have what with the resources that are around us um because yeah the fear only take up space which is unnecessary um yeah you know it's it's not necessarily um a great use of time to to fear but to create adaptability dynamic and robustability the same way that that nature will you know if a tree falls then um then something else is going to grow in its place or <laughs> nature is already prepared there's already seeds there dropped um for for new growth to start i guess maybe that's the biggest thing to take away from it that you know make sure that there's already seeds there for um for, for that for that to grow in its place thank you so much Dylan. yeah um anya i think you have your hand up i don't know if you can hear us Yes, um, right. I would just like to come in for a moment um, to the spontaneous gathering online <laughs> um, and maybe to just quickly introduce myself. I live in southwest Portugal. I was involved with uh, Vitor and Audrey um, in uh, co-organizing parts of the first gathering and I'm looking forward to contribute something for this version and I hear my my coup was uh, the failure and um, how to um, allow for um, a sort of safe enough to try status um, that, of course, many of you probably are very aware um, and build into your um, into your living systems building. So from a sociocratic point of view, um, that is something that we in Portugal um, are very familiar with in the Southwest. There's quite a lot of projects, including the projects I'm involved in, that really try actively to encourage 
a safe enough to try um, approach. And I would just like to give a gift of um, the meaning of that really is, it's not like, okay, let's try and see, we're probably going to fail. Uh, it's rather, if we have the safe enough to try, have we heard all the voices? These are the voices around the table. Um, is that a collective yes? And great if the voices around the table have given that. It, it seems pretty safe enough. We've looked at all the different angles of this one topic that we'd like to try. Is there another voice? In our case, since we're a land project, we try to... It's not straightforward, but uh, we try to call for the voice of nature. What if? So that is maybe just a gift to push it a little bit further. Because in the regenerative movement, let's say, it, a lot of things are not defined. We're trying to do something, again, a bit different, etc. So, But still safety and um, doability and uh, impact right measurement is what yeah i'm hearing is important to explore what impact are we leaving also with our tests in the regenerative realm so i pass back to audrey thank you thank you so much anya yeah thank you for this perspective of the the grounding um anya works and and co-leads this very, very beautiful um, regeneration project in the south of Portugal, by the way. Anya, maybe you want to put some links in the chat, which um, brings me to a initial wrap up of this conversation for which I want to show you this. This is where the gathering is going to take place in that tree. <laughs> no, but I'm I'm on the land. Uh, I'm, I'm it's actually correct. I'm on the land, uh, the, the, I don't like to say the venue, but uh, let's say yeah, the venue of, of the gathering. And I've been here since Friday. And to go back to what you were saying, Jeremy, for me, I've realized by being here and living here and, and taking the time to be in the space, how important this was for me and how I can see the immense value of this online two-dimensional space where we can talk about ideas and be very much in our heads, in our brains and, and ideate, which I love because philosophy is so much fun, um, but also how I was actually, and I am actually completely unable to, to produce or to co-create an event without being in the space of the event. And, and it really dawned on me that for all the conversations I've been having for the past nine months about place-based and it you know regenerative projects need to be grounded in the earth and so on and so forth i was like ah this is what it meant i need to be walking on this land to be able to understand where the camp's going to be and how we will people interact and where may they meet or where may they have a space to retreat and i have no idea right but what i know is that the way this nature here which is super beautiful is informing how we will be together at the gathering is huge, much more than I would have imagined. And it's not that I want to throw away the space of ideas and two-dimensionality of the internet. It's just that I think we may underestimate the importance of the ability to move between one and the other. I need to be in the space here, grounded in the earth. And then I want to be with all of you who are currently representing, I don't know, I think as many countries as there are people on this call. Um, but how can we take this information from one space and bring it to the other and so on, which uh, echoes what you were saying, Joe, I think, about the, the meta patterns and then the local place-based patterns and, and how we move between them. Um, so that's my last word. We I'm posting photos and videos, by the way, of the land in our Telegram group. So if you haven't joined them, feel free to. Um, I would like to bring this session to a close. Uh, this is a recording session. So I just want to do a very quick round one word check out. Um, I think it was quite an intense conversation. So I want to offer a 15 minute decompression breakout rooms, which will not be recorded after the checkout for, for those who want to stay, for those who have 
more to say outside of, of the recording, if that's okay. Um, for the checkout, I want to keep it very simple. Hendrik, please help me. <laughs> you said one word, so maybe let's... Yeah. Uh, I, I think what's beautiful uh, is that we all, most of us or all of us are going to see each other in September. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Uh, and we're going to walk on land and around trees and get to know each other's ideas in, 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 in 3D. Um, so maybe from like, what are we carrying here into what is to come in one to three words and just do a, a blitz round in that sense. Thank you so and much. You're carrying from here that is going to feed the space in between before September because it's still a couple months in one to three words. Thank you. I'll call people again, uh, Victor and then Anya. Mycelium. Uh, Anya and then Jeremy. Hello. <laughs> um, interrogation of, uh, of, of possibilities. And therefore, maybe failures. I pass to Mark. Mark? Life? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm on. Sorry, I just dropped out. I'm going to say. harmonic life force and interconnected consciousness. All right. Uh, Alisa. Interbeing. Nika. Um, curiosity and interconnectedness. What's man? Uh, natural intelligence. Uh, Hendrik. Over prepared and under structured. Dylan. Um, budding structures. Simon. Curiouser and curiouser. <laughs> nope. Uh, Petron. <laughs> the slightly intangible and definitely hard to put into a deliverable. So, Colleen. Mm. Uh, sacred and profane collaborations. And myself. So much. Um, collective. Collective and dialogue. So I will stop I've recording. Got, I got vibes. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. That's all right. No, no, don't. I I can take care of myself, Audrey. Thank you. It's all right. <laughs> Thank you. you don't. I. You know, I'm a big kid. Oh, it's okay. Um, practicality, um, intention, uh, um, embodiment, vibes, playfulness, um, curiosity um color um creativity um tickles hugs um and lots of snuggles anybody else i just want to put emphasis on the tickles thank you <laughs> um okay i will stop recording unless anyone has something very important to say for those people who will be watching us a huge thank you to all of you. As I said, we will. I will be here for another ten to fifteen minutes. Uh, if you want to decompress or have a breakout, but thank you so much for your time and your presence and your honest sharing from the heart and from the mind. And um, very much looking forward to seeing you all very soon in September at the at the gathering.